Now, does your home look like this? And you wanna turn your home into looking like this? And in this video, I'm going to be talking about different ways to help show your home in its best light. So in this video, we're talking all about how to stage your home. First, we need to start with the outside. If you were a buyer, would you be excited about the outside of your property? Would you be excited about immediately wanting to go into this house and take a peek at it? Would you take one look and uh, drive away? <laughs> it's important to remember that your first showing always starts online. Your photos matter, and in order to have beautiful photos, What's happening on the inside and the outside of your house is of the utmost importance. So we need to figure out how to make your house look really, really good on the inside. And we do that by staging it. Front door of your home is the first opportunity for buyers to get a first impression. So things that you could do to up the first impression of this is A, get a new front door, B, paint your front door, fix holes in any screen doors that you may have or get a whole new screen altogether, get a new welcome mat, and anything that needs a little bit of paint and touch up. If it's winter time, you wanna make sure that your driveways are clear and that your walkways, walkways are clear and free from snow and ice. If it's fall time, you wanna make sure that you're blowing away all those pesky weaves, in which case a leaf blower is going to become your new best friend. I just really wanna know that you take pride in your home and you take good care of your home and that it's clean and well maintained. Some additional things that you could do to judge up the outside, depending on when the time of year that you're selling it, if it's around the fall time, you could put out a few pumpkins. If it's getting towards Christmas and the holidays, you could put out an evergreen wreath. If it's the spring or summer, you could put out some planters with a few flowers. Now, as we move to the inside, what is the very first thing that the buyer is going to see when they walk in the door? Does it feel inviting? Or are they walking directly into a pile of stuff, a pile of shoes, a pile of kids' backpacks hanging on the wall, right into a wall, a stairway, a garage, a door? What's happening the very second that they walk into your house? What is the very first thing that they're going to see? You wanna make sure that this area is very inviting, very clean, very neat, and very tidy. Also wanna make sure that your floors are very clean and your carpet has been cleaned. You need to remember that your house has to look show ready and ready to go for every showing that you have, for every open house and every buyer or agent that walks through that door. I've showed properties that were not quite ready to hit the market simply because there was low inventory. I did video tours with my buyer, the home was not staged, my buyers could have not been more uninterested in the property because it was a mess and it wasn't ready to be shown to buyers yet. So don't make that mistake. You need to put in the effort to make it look really, really good on the inside. Number two, how do you actually stage a living room? First thing you wanna do is you wanna let light so you want to remove any very heavy drapes or draperies or ugly blinds. You want to hide unattractive views with sheer window coverings that still let light in because this is all about light. You want to turn on all the lights, you want to open up all the windows, and you want a lot of light to hit the property. People do not want to live in a dark area. And if you have low ceilings and it's dark, it makes it 1,000 times worse. So grab some new light bulbs and up the wattage and get really nice LED light bulbs. You wanna add a lamp to any dark places. You wanna paint your walls a sophisticated neutral color. Grays, whites, anything that is neutral and inviting. Is there an awkward space in your home that you don't know how to utilize and that a buyer wouldn't understand what it is? You wanna show potential buyers what that area could be by furnishing it. Make sure they know that it is a functioning space. You could make it a kid's area. You could make it a chalkboard wall. Is it big enough to have a podcast studio, a YouTube studio, a little bench and sitting area? Could it be a very well-kept and clean kid's area? Could it function like a chic little home office? Could it be a yoga space or a little space in the house for a home gym? To take the awkward spaces and make sure that you get creative and figure out how to utilize them so that the buyer knows that it's a functioning space and oh they get ideas of what it could be used for. Also want to remove a lot of your family photos. 
This is the time to put away anything that is very personal to you and a lot of your personal photos. You don't want the house to be too personal. You want it to appeal to a broad range of people. Personal family photos, things on your fridge such as your kids report cards, they just tend to clutter the walls, clutter the shelves, clutter bookcases. So really declutter and minimalize and put a lot of those personal things away. The interior of your home should feel very warm but not overly decorated. The furniture can be a big make or break in a house. If you have a luxury home, you need to have really high-end furniture in there. You can't have a $14 million house and have Ikea furniture in there. It just doesn't work. However, on the flip side, you have a one-bedroom condo that's over at Canyon Creek could really benefit for, from some nicer furniture and really zhuzh it up and make it a really chic place. These are my thoughts on virtual, virtual staging. Yes, rooms can be staged virtually, especially if your home is vacant and you decide you do not want to pay the money to bring a stager in and have the home staged. You can have virtual staging photos. However, I always like to portray a house exactly what it's going to look like when a buyer walks in. Because sometimes if you just stage a home for photos and then a buyer comes and walks through the house, they wonder where all the beautiful furniture went. Or they ask, where's all the furniture? Because sometimes these virtual staging photos are so beautiful and so good that it looks real life. That is how good these photos have gotten. So I think they're great as a marketing tactic, especially if you're in a pinch and you don't you have a vacant house or you have a room and you just don't know what to do with it or your furniture is really dated and we sort of need to like show people that this can look a little bit more modern and not so dated. Virtual photos are a great way to show a buyer what it could look like. Places to go to get inspiration for staging and furniture and little accents of decor is Pinterest. All you have to do is type in staging a living room or trending living rooms and you'll get a ton of stuff and a ton of ideas. I think you can also get away sometimes if you're like a designer and you're really good with style, sometimes even going to like TJ Maxx Amazon or Wayfair, you can get really thing, really nice things at an affordable, well, I mean, I don't know how quality they are and how long they will last, but you can get nice things that look nice and put them in your house. And sometimes you can get away with, get away with it if you're really good at knowing how to make it look expensive. But I'm telling you, if you have a luxury home, $5 million and up, buyers are going to recognize what kind of appliances you have in there. They're going to recognize the floors. They're going to recognize furniture brands. High-end homes need high-end furniture. Third thing is how do you stage a kitchen? You want buyers to know that your kitchen is light, bright, airy, and fresh. Good news is that you don't have to spend a fortune on a remodel if you don't want to. And these few changes can really help make your kitchen look better. If you wanna add some character, you could always do a nice bowl with fresh fruit. You could do flowers. You could do pompagrass. You don't wanna leave a lot of items on your counter. I would say no more than a coffee maker and a toaster and put the rest of the things away. People wanna see counter space, especially if they love to cook. They wanna know how much counter space is there. Overly crowded counter spaces make it look like your kitchen has no storage. You want to clean up and organize your cupboards and your drawers, as well as your pantry. Not everybody is going to be the home edit. However, you can get some really nice inspiration from looking at their stuff. Their pantries are to die for and beautiful. Their organization skills are incredible. You can also hire people to come and do this for you. Guess what? Buyers open drawers and they open cupboards. And if they open it and it's a mess, they're gonna think like, wow, this cupboard has no space. <laughs> so what does it look like in there when you open up closets, pantries, drawers, and cabinets? Another thing that you can do is update your dated cabinets by sanding them and repainting them. Switching out fixtures to more modern ones is a very easy way to make it look much better, as well as changing out like your sink faucet or getting a new sink. What kind of appliances do you have? How old are they? Do they need to be cleaned? Do they have a lot of fingerprints on them? Are they dirty? What does your kitchen smell like? You can light candles, you can do aromatherapy, lavender smells amazing, and so does lemon color of your cabinets do matter and a lot of the dated 90s oak cabinets are very very orange and 
most of the time it doesn't bother you when you're living there, but I'm telling you, they do not look good in photos. They come out oversaturated and they look like a giant barbecue buffalo chicken wing. So the more, the cooler, cooler colors come out better in photos. Warmer colors tend to oversaturate a photo and they just seem to not look as good in photos. Trust me on this, I've been through the ringer because I have sold a lot of homes that were very dated in Park City. You definitely wanna figure out what styles are trending, what kind of kitchens are trending, and paint your paint your cabinets a color that is trending and according to what buyers are looking for in the market currently when you are getting ready to list your house. Fourth one is how do you stage a bedroom? Our goal is we want to appeal to as many buyers as possible. I'm telling you, people go through the closets. They go through your closet and I'm not telling you to go in there and color code your entire closet and organize your shoes into shoe bins, but I am telling you to keep it neat and you don't need photos of the closet, they don't need to go online unless you have a home edit style closet. Really want the bedroom to feel very light, airy, and fresh. Again, we want a lot of light in here. You don't want a lot of heavy and bulky furniture in your bedroom or in your living room or in your house at all. So I would say for the bedroom, you don't want any more than three pieces of furniture, a bed, nightstands, and a dresser, or a cute little ottoman at the end of the bed, or if you have a big enough room to have like a cute little love seat at the end of the bed, but I would say try to have no more than three pieces of furniture in your bedrooms. And freshen it up by throwing on lots of throw pillows. We love good throw pillows, probably no more than four to six on the bed. You can also zhuzh it up with a cute little fox, fox fur throw or rug, or a cute little snuggly big chunky knit blanket. Also decorate the space with some nice green plants. Definitely does not help to get a new comforter or new linens to really freshen it up to make it look nice and clean. Think of this like a hotel. When you walk into a hotel, how are hotel beds made? How does the hotel room look? We want your bedroom to look like that, especially in photos and especially for showings. The thing is how do we stage bathroom? I like to think of the bathroom as a place of serenity, a place to retreat. I'm somebody that likes to have a sacred little space at night and have bubble baths and have a really nice bath. I want zen and peace in the bathroom. Nobody wants to see your razors, your shampoo bottles, all of your makeup littered all over the counter, your blow dryers, your hair dryers, your brushes, your toothbrushes, your kid shampoos, towels on the floor. Nobody wants to see your things. So. Really try to put those in the cupboards or wipe and clean down the shower or have a little bin for all of your shower things. Put all of your makeup and hair things away so they are not cluttering the counter and they're not taking up space on the counter. Again, think of the bathroom counter like your kitchen counter. You don't want a lot of things on the counter. Maybe a plant and that's it. If you have a very dated bathroom, you can always judge it up by having a really nice white fluffy towels, putting in a really beautiful plant in there with a scented candle, Ooh, and always throwing a luxe fur throw anywhere and everywhere always makes a house feel really high-end and luxurious for whatever reason. You can throw it over a chair, it zhuzhs it up. You can throw it on the ground, it zhuzhs it up. You can throw it on a bed. It's so versatile, it's one of the most amazing pieces. You also could get a new shower curtain if you still have a shower curtain and a new shower or rug in the, in the bathroom. And you definitely want to update the fixtures. You could do your bathroom faucet as well as the shower head or change out the knobs and the fixtures and the hardware on your cabinets. And if you have really dated cabinets, I always suggest also painting those like you painted the kitchen. The sixth thing is how do you actually stage an outdoor space? Again, a leaf blower is your new best friend. You really want to clean and clear off the deck. You also wanna make sure the deck is in good repair and it's painted and it's not chipping and it doesn't look rugged and rough. And especially in Park City, it can get really the weather really wears on wood decks up here, so repaint it, resand it, get it looking really, really nice. There's outdoor rugs. If you have outdoor furniture, an outdoor fire pit, make it look like a place where somebody's going to want to come out, have a glass of wine on it, drink their coffee on it in the morning, in the summer. You can have umbrellas out there. People like to have dinner parties on their decks. This is a place and a space where you want to have a gathering space. 
This is where people entertain their, their guests and their families and their friends. So make sure that it's really clean and the deck is swept off. You really wanna give your house the attention that it needs and prepare it for the market. I suggest try to do as much as you can of what I'm saying because it will help your home sell much faster and it will set you apart from the competition. You can also get the link to the free home staging guide down below. It goes over everything that I just talked about in this video.